Giddy has to find somebody, finds Holmgren, the turnaround shot to tie it, and John Holmgren with the three, and the buzzer ties it at 117. That right there was Chet Holmgren hitting an unthinkable turnaround three-point shot with just over a second left in the game, which was just part of his 36.10 rebounds, five assists, and four-stock game versus the Golden State Warriors, in which he and Shea Gilgis Alexander proved they aren't just a promising young duo, they are legitimately one of the best duos in the NBA. Defense has stepped up. The lob, Holmgren right over the top off the feed from SGA. And when you have two guys like this, it's no coincidence that the Thunder are currently 10 and 4 and have gone from a promising young team to a legit force in the Western Conference. I mean, how are you supposed to guard this? On the Thunder's first play of the game, Chet gives the handoff to Shea. Shea drives, gets two feet in the paint, so Chet pops out for the three and knocks it down. 40 seconds later, this time Shea gets the ball on the wing. With Aiden not wanting to fully commit off Chet, he half-heartedly swipes at the ball and once Shea gets past that, it's a free lane to the rim. Those are two very straightforward examples, but this is what OKC do. They force defenses into rotation with unselfish ball movement, and once the defense is forced to rotate, that's when you see the talent, because the moment you are late to close out on any number of OKC's players, they will take you off the dribble. Just ask J-Dub. J, double team. And he snaps it over to J-Dub, goes right around Simon. And so far, the numbers back up what we can all see is happening. Because 14 games into the season, and OKC boast a top 7 offense and defense to go along with the third best net rating in the NBA. They're doing all of this as the youngest team in the NBA, and it's not even close. And you can point to a lot of reasons why the Thunder have taken this leap. But the biggest reason, figuratively and literally, is Chet Holmgren. I mean, what he did against Kavon Looney and the Golden State Warriors was just straight up unfair. Look here as he has Looney on an island at the three-point line and just gets to work, getting two feet in the paint before hitting absolutely nothing but net on the fadeaway. And it's this fluidity and skill which makes him so hard to guard because you're telling me guys like Nikola Vucevic have to try and guard him? Just look at Chet pump fake the three, spin inside and back the other way before hitting the fadeaway. But he's not just someone that can cook in the mid-range or against slower bigs. Even against athletic bigs, he can still go to work. Watch this play. Holmgren gives the ball up to man. He sets the screen before popping for three and knocking it down. Now, I showed you that play because the very next possession, he gets the ball at the three-point line. And with Aiden worried about his three-point threat, he overcommits, so Chet drives, spins left, and then finishes underneath Aiden. He might be skinny, but his fluidity and skill at that size is special. And just to put into perspective how special it is, right here are his shooting numbers from all spots on the floor in comparison to his idol and one of the greatest scorers in NBA history, Kevin Durant. Yes, he's doing this on way less volume, but he's also doing it as a rookie, and these are numbers we just flat out have not seen from a rookie. And the crazy thing is, he told us this exact thing was going to happen. I feel like my ability to create my own shot, uh, and, you know, score on my own uh, will definitely be on display for sure. I think I could be a 50, 40, 90 player. Okay, sure. that's what there I want. There we go. And you know the guy he's playing with? Well, his three-point shooting might stop him from being a 50, 40, 90 guy. But how does 53% from the field, 36% from three, and 92% from the line sound whilst putting up 30 six and six. And if you want any idea as to just how good Shea Gilgis Alexander is, look no further than what he did in the second half and overtime versus the Golden State Warriors, because it was one of the most ridiculous displays of guard play I've seen in a long, long time. After a slow first half, Shea went 14 of 19 from the field in the second half and OT, scoring 32 points. And if that doesn't sound ridiculous enough, the difficulty of these shots, I don't even have words. With 2.30 left in OT and scores level, Shea gets the switch onto CP3. He crosses right, gets to his spot with a step back, and it's butter. 40 seconds later, and this time he has Looney isolated. Sizes him up before going behind the back, and look at the shot. Look at the arc he puts on that ball to counter the extra length of Looney. And if you want to see arc, well, this shot was even better. With one point separating the two teams, and the Thunder scrambling to get 
get a shot off, they give the ball to SGA. He drives hard left off the catch and manages to stop on a dime, rising above the elite athleticism of Andrew Wiggins, dropping it in. Unbelievable defense, but no answer for Shea. And just in case you thought he couldn't do any more. Almost like a moonshot. Oh, now the block on Stephen Curry, and it's going to be a run out. Shea, one man to beat. That sequence right there is just the encapsulation of what makes Shea a superstar. On one end, he hits a fading jump shot over an elite defender. Ten seconds later, he's blocking the greatest shooter of all time and running it out in transition to seal the game. And this right here is what makes this OKC Thunder team special. They've got talent. I mean, on any other team, I would have spent the first five minutes talking about Jalen Williams, who is casually averaging 18 points on great efficiency like it's nothing. But in addition to this talent, they can all defend. Just look at their two rookies. We know what Chet can do, but allow me to introduce you to Kaysan Wallace. In addition to his ludicrous shooting splits, he has been an absolute monster on the defensive end of the floor. Just watch this play. With Jackson bringing the ball up the floor, Wallace is pressing it. He navigates the Jokic screen going body to body with Jackson, absorbing the contact before tying him up for a jump ball. Or how about versatility, where he starts by guarding Devontae Graham, he decides to switch onto Victor Wambanyama, fronting him, and with Chet helping on the back line, McDermott doesn't know what to do, so Wallace pounces, intercepting the pass and casually throwing the lob. And this is OKC across the board, because you can't mention Case on Wallace without mentioning what Shea does on defense, or what Lou Dort or Jalen Williams do. I mean, when your best player and out and out top 10 player is getting low and guarding every single possession, these young guys don't have a choice but to follow suit. Then just to cap it off, by chance one of these guys gets blown by, well, you have one of the best shot blocking prospects in recent memory. Just look at this play where DeJounte completely beats Dub on the back cut and pause here. With DeJounte running in a straight line with all the momentum and Shet having to change direction, surely it's a clear layup. No, because Chet is able to use his Inspector Gadget-like arms to swipe it out of nowhere. And it's just his timing that is impeccable. His ability to switch onto guards and move his feet well before then contesting or blocking shots, or against bigger players in the paint, he might not have the strength, but he's capable of taking the contact and then reaching these guys at the apex. I know the Thunder have so much talent, but what Chet Holmgren and SGA are doing right now I mean, you can't help but think of another duo that graced this team a decade ago. I mean, heck, you could add the other parallel with J-Dub. Now, if you did make it all the way to the end of the video, a like would be greatly appreciated. You might as well subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Either way, have a great day. Bye.